I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Matt Duchesne of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. I'm Ryan Johansson of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie, Sonia. And before we get started on the No Half Step in Hockey coverage, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to our home website and get good and educated, then you can click on that merchandise tab, and that's where you're going to find our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, and all the other outstanding event t-shirts that we have in our online store. But don't worry, the gimmicks are still there. The socks, the wall art, the throw pillows, all of that. You can outfit your entire home, your entire body from our online store, and we would appreciate it if you would do so because... We've sold out so that you can buy in. Social media is exactly how you can go about helping us out. It doesn't take you but a second. doesn't cost you anything. And you can go and give us a follow, a like, a subscription, or just share a link. It would go a long ways to helping out our operation. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. You can find us on all of those social media platforms. You can find us streaming live on Twitch. You can find us in our video podcast at YouTube. You can find us in our audio podcast on Stitcher, on Spotify, on Amazon, and so many other audio platforms. We can be found just about everywhere so please give us a little bit of support out there it goes a long way to helping this independent operation and it sure goes a long way to helping out me if you would like to become a partner of the show or support the show by giving a donation venmo is how you go about doing that just search renegades of puck or scan the qr code that's currently on your screen thanks to generous renegades like yourselves we have been able to upgrade significant amounts of equipment here around the bunker and it is very obvious looking back on some of our shows from the previous year how how much we have been able to improve the camera, the microphone, the lighting. And now I've been able to get myself a brand new set of headphones for the editing session of the show. So thank you again. Stick taps, love and respect to each and every one of you. Even a dollar goes a long way to an independent operation. So Venmo is how you can support the show right there and become a partner. Now it's time for the no half step in hockey coverage. So let me get to the goods. It's time for operation number 693 for the Renegades of Puck. That's right. Show number 693. 93, and in this moment in hockey history, the National Predators currently find themselves in sixth place in the Central Division. 33 games played on the season. They have a record of 14, 14, and 5. 33 points has them 15 points behind first place Dallas, 10 points behind second place Winnipeg. The Minnesota Wild are in third place. Colorado Avalanche are in fourth place. The St. Louis Blues are in fifth place, just two points ahead of the Nashville Predators. And the Arizona Coyotes are four points behind the Nashville Predators in seventh place. And the Chicago Blackhawks are at the bottom of the division in in eighth place at just 20 points on the season. The National Predators next game takes place on the road. They have a road record on the season of 6-8-2. and two. They've scored 84 goals in the season. They've given up 101. That's a goal differential of minus 17. So for the National Predators, after 33 games played, they are back to 500 yet again. Now after this next game versus the Anaheim Ducks in Anaheim, they'll close out the 2022 calendar Saturday in Las Vegas and then Tuesday open up the 2023 calendar at home versus the Montreal Canadiens, then head out on a lengthy road trip beginning Thursday in Carolina, Friday in Washington, and then the 9th of January in Ottawa. So for the Nashville Predators, an opportunity to go to Anaheim and score their second victory of the season over the Ducks. It was back on November the 29th when the Nashville Predators scored a 2-1 victory in overtime. It was the captain, Roman Yossi, with the overtime game-winning goal. Colton Sissons had the other goal for the Nashville Predators. UC Soros scored the victory 34 out of 35 in net. These two teams will meet one more time. It won't happen until March the 12th when the National Predators will go to Anaheim for the second time. Now, talking about the Ducks, they are, well, they're awful. 9-22-4 and four on the season is only 22 points. They are 8th, which is last place in the Pacific Division. On home ice, they have a losing record of 5-8-1, and one, and they have a goal differential of minus 63. In their last five games, on the 15th of December, is a 5-2 victory at the Montreal Canadiens, followed up on the 17th with a 4-3 victory at the Edmonton Oilers, and then on the 20th of December, a 4-1 loss at Los Angeles, then a 4-1 loss versus the Minnesota Wild, a 3-2 overtime loss versus the Calgary Flames on the 23rd, and they will be facing off against the Vegas Golden Knights on Wednesday night before they will be taking on the Nashville Predators at home on Friday afternoon. Taking a look at the NHL rankings between these two 
32 teams and all of the statistical metrics, and they rank in the bottom third of the NHL in virtually every single category. The National Purse and Goals for a 2.50 per game is 30th in the NHL, but that is actually ahead in this metric in this battle because the Anaheim Ducks goals for a 2.31 per game is 32nd or last in the NHL. Goals against the National Purse are giving up 3.03 per game. They are 16th best in the NHL, while the Anaheim Ducks are dead last in this category as well, 32nd, giving up 4.11 goals per game. In shots for, which is means shots generated on the net by the National Purse, 30.4 per game has them set a 20th in the league, while the Anaheim Ducks are 29th overall in the NHL, 29.1 on net per game. Now, shots against. The Anaheim Ducks are giving up an incredible amount of shots against, 38 8.1, which is 32nd or last in the NHL, while the National Purse are giving up 33.7. That number seems high enough, but it's nowhere near the 38. Preds are 29th in the NHL. Special teams, not a very exciting matchup right here. 16.2% for the National Purse on the power play. That's 29th in the NHL. 18 conversion on 111 opportunities, while Anaheim is the 28th rated power play in the NHL. Just one spot ahead of the National Purse. They've converted 17 times at 100 opportunities for 17% on the season. On the penalty kill the Preds are 18th in the NHL that wins the metric in the battle between these two clubs for this particular matchup 25 power play goals against 77.7 percent kill rate for the National Purs on the other side of the ledger for Anaheim they are 30th rated in the NHL they've given up 40 power play goals against now in the season and they have a penalty kill rate of 69.5 percent now every team in the NHL has some high caliber individual players and of course the Anaheim Ducks have plenty of them so let's go through their top scores Terry 12 goals in season 17 this is 29 points would be leading the Nashville Predators in scoring Zegras 10 goals and 15 assists for 25 points McTavish 6 and 14 for 20 Strom at 8 goals and 10 assists for 18 points overall and Adam Henrique at 9 goals and 8 assists for 17 points in net Gibson has a record of 5 14 and 3 a save percentage of 8 9 6 a goals against average of 3.99 none of those numbers are very good and we all know that John Gibson is a much better goaltender than this he just happens to be the net minder of a very bad hockey team at this point in time. On the other side of the ledger, the individual stats for the Nashville Predators are as follows. Matt Duchesne, Roman Yossi, Philip Forsberg all have 26 points on the season at this point, tied for the team lead. Let me give you the breakdown for each. Duchesne is at 10 goals and 16 assists for 26 points. Forsberg is also at 10 goals and 16 assists for 26 points. And then the captain, Roman Yossi, 7 goals and 19 assists for 26 points. Mikhail Granlund, 4 and 16 for 20. Ron Johansson, 9 and 9 for 18. UC Saros has a record of 11, 9, and 5 on the season in net. 9, 1, 4 save percentage, 2.81 goals against average. And Kevin Lankin in 3 and 4 record on the season, 9, 2, 5 save percentage, 2.64 goals against average with the National Predators having back-to-back -back games out on the West Coast or in the Pacific Division would be a more accurate way to describe it. Anaheim, Vegas, back-to-back, -back, less than 24 hours apart. You would anticipate that each of these goaltenders are going to get an opportunity to start not knowing who's going to start, giving the numbers for both potential starters, but you would think Lankinen versus Anaheim and UC Soros uh, against the Las Vegas Golden Knights. But who knows how John Hines is going to deploy it. That gets you all set up for the Nashville Predators against the Anaheim Ducks. Second match of the season between these Western Conference rivals. They won't meet again until the very end of the season. Nashville Predators have already secured two points out of two potential points on the season. They absolutely must secure these next two points. They cannot give up any more room to teams below them in the standings. And there are so few and far teams between them below them in the standings rebirth sports check out their work rebirthsports.com or find them on social media twitter facebook instagram very easy to find them they're very interactive very good people and i certainly love having a partnership with that crew you see me wearing the renegades of puck home jersey right here in the bunker you see me wearing the road jersey the third jersey just last night skating with the mighty drunks here in middle tennessee in the middle c division got a chance to pull on the red white and blue rebirth sports mighty drunks jersey Good looking threads out there at the rink. Got asked multiple times, where did that jersey come from? And I had to tell them, of course, because I love having the conversation. Came from Rebirth Sports. Sure to appreciate them. They take visions, make them reality, and they are certainly not jersey makers. They are hockey tailors. So check out their work, rebirthsports.com. 
We go all the way back to December the 27th of the year 2022 when the Nashville Predators and John Hines deployed their lines in the following way. Forsberg, Novak, and Granlin, Niederreiter, Glass, and Janot make up your top six. Trent and Johansson and Jankowski, Smith, Parson, and Sissons, no Matt Duchesne, Matt Duchesne, and his family welcome their third child uh, into the world. So Matt Duchesne missed this game due to that significant life event. So we get to see Jankowski getting an opportunity in this lineup. Your defensive pairings are McDonough and Yo. UC Ekholm and Carrier, Luzon and Fabro. UC Saros gets the start in that. We're 119 into the post Christmas break, and it's already 1 0 in favor of the Dallas Stars. His Ben scores his 14th goal uh, this season. It was a wrist shot from the slot after Novak's turnover. The Nashville Purs find themselves behind very quickly. Looking rusty to start this game. We're 4-0-3 into the first period. The Preds are already down by one, and Saros has to come up with a save on Hockenbaugh. 538, Saros comes up with a save on Olofsson at close range. At 925, we see Ottinger getting into the game with a save on Eckholm's heavy shot from out high. As a matter of fact, on further review, Jankowski gets a deflection in the blue paint of Eckholm's heavy shot from out high, making it even more impressive save by Ottinger at 1107. Saros comes up with a save on Lundquist at 1207. Saros is scrambled, denies John. There's a pile of bodies in the crease, and Saros is able to maintain his composure. 14.04 at the first period. Ottinger comes with a save on Jano, plus the follow up by Dante Favreau. 14.34. Saros comes with a save on Johnston's deflection after the turnover. 14.39. Dante Favreau's off to the box. Two minutes for puck over the glass. Unforced error there on the Nashville Purge. You see Saros comes up with the save on Sagan, plus Faxa's rebound jam. Good D support right here by the Nashville Purge penalty killing. It's at 17.02. Sissons is now off to the box. Two minutes for puck over the glass. Second penalty in a matter of minutes for puck over the glass. Very, very strong. PK by the Nashville Purs in this instance. 1945 of the first period. Ottinger comes up with a save on Yossi off of the rush at 1945 as well. Hockenpah picks up a penalty. Two minutes for interference. It was on the player crashing the slot looking for a rebound on the Roman Yossi shot attempt. So the Nashville Purs will have a power play that rolls over into the second period. Dallas outshoots Nashville 12 to 8 in the first period. The Preds very sleepy coming out of the Christmas break here over the first 20 minutes. See if they can pick things up with this power play. Carry over one 45 on the clean sheet and it's Tommy Novak unfortunately off to the box for the Nashville Predators for tripping we'd see a four on four for a minute and six seconds but the Nashville Predators are going to seize this opportunity as Philip Forsberg is going to pick up his 10th goal of the season Carrier's pass off of the pads allows Philip Forsberg to finish from the circle we see this play as a setup many times in the NHL nowadays where the player shoots with the intent of banking it off the goaltender's pads over to one of his teammates and that's exactly what happened Carrier with the perfect play right here Forsberg with the easy conversion 10th goal of the season ties the game up at one apiece but as the Nashville Predators go shorthanded Rupe Hintz takes advantage and seizes the opportunity and the momentum right back with his 17th goal of the season it was a deflection of a long shot at the top of the crease right through the five hole Dallas immediately back on top now two to one 248 of the second period Fox is off to the box two minutes for holding Ottinger's coming up with a save on Nita Ryder but then at 641 of the second Yossi's off to the box two minutes for holding Ottinger comes up with a save on Janot and Jankowski on the short handed rush that's right the Nashville Purs generating offense while shorthanded and then they're at it again as Trennan scores his third goal of the season time game of two apiece it was a shorthand goal coming off the two on two rush Trennan pulls to the middle and uses all of those other bodies as a screen as he fires the shot beating Ottinger tying the game up at two apiece the Preds with a four on four goal and now a shorthanded goal in this game two for Nashville two for Dallas midway through the game 1047 of the second period Ottinger comes up with a save on carry plus his rebound follow-up. Good job following his own shot. 12-15 in the second. Lundquist off the box. Two minutes for slashing on Jankowski's drive to the net. Ottinger still had to come up with a strong save on the continuation. Not much happening for the Nashville Predators power play. 16-11 on the second period. Saros comes up with a save on Sagan. It's only Dallas's third shot of the entire period and it comes at 16-11 of the second period. 18-35. Ottinger's got a great save at the back door on Ekholm. Really strong save right here by the Dallas netminder 1947 Forsberg though off the box two minutes for slashing in the offensive zone not only did Ottinger make a big save on Ekholm but the Nashville Predators were buzzing there at the end of the second period then Forsberg takes this needless penalty for slashing in the offensive zone we hit the end of the second period with the Nashville Predators out shooting the Dallas Stars 21 to 16 the Nashville Predators 13 shots on goal in the second period Dallas only four the Nashville Predators great job of waking from their slumber and taking control in the second period. 
Dallas has a carryover of their power play of 147 onto the clean sheet of the third period. And UC Soros is back to work, coming up with a big save on Robertson's one-timer. 124 of the third period, Ottinger comes up with a save on Cole Smith at close range. 443 of the third, Soros comes up with a save on Foxa. One-on-one, -on -one. he had plenty of time, space, and room to take that shot. UC Soros was up to the challenge. 624 of the third period, Soros comes up with a save on Hockenpah through traffic. 834, Soros already back to work again. Another big save at the post on Sagan, 10-12, Ottinger now working hard as he comes up with a save on Forsberg at close range, 11-54, Fabro comes up with a stick check that prevents a goal at the back door, the puck had gotten all the way through behind Soros and was assured to be a goal if not for Dante Fabro's slick stick check at this moment. 12-27 to the third period, UC Soros comes up with a save on Hints at 14-20. Luzon's off to the box, two minutes for interference. Ottinger comes up with a save on Janos, partial breakaway shorthanded, and UC Soros has to come up with a save on Ben. But then at 1908, after the Nashville Predators kill off the penalty against, it's Hints. With his 18th goal of the season, it was a rebound put back for the Dallas Stars. The Preds lost the battle in the quarter. Stars are able to carry the puck out of the corner and towards the front of the net and get multiple scoring opportunities, including the jam that ends up winning the game for the Dallas Stars. They take the lead 3-2 to two and they win the game. 3-2 to two is the Nashville Purge with the extra attacker for the final seconds are unable to generate much of a good scoring chance. The Stars end up out shooting the Preds 33-28 to 28 at the end of this game. And for the Nashville Purge, they were within 52 seconds of securing at least one point against the first place team in the Central Division. If the Preds had perhaps played a little bit more of a complete game, they would have easily picked up this point, if not two points. It was a sluggish, sleepy start coming off the Christmas break, and there were moments there towards the end of the game where the Nashville Purge simply could not bring enough jam to beat the first place Dallas Stars. There were times in this game where the Nashville Purge looked very good. They fought back from being down one nothing and down 2-1. to one. And again, they were less than a minute away from securing a point against the best team in the Central Division, a team that handled the National Purs quite easily in their first two meetings of the season. So a better performance against Dallas, but still taking the loss on home ice and giving up the game losing goal in the final minute of play after losing what seemed like a harmless battle in the corner for the National Purs. It is simply a dropped opportunity. They should have come away with at least one point. UC Soros had played good enough to keep them in the game, to keep them at that one point. But again, the National Purs come away away with a shorthanded goal and a four-on-four -four goal, but their power play falters and five-on-five. Five, they just simply couldn't get it done against Ottinger. Dallas now 3-0 and against the Nashville Predators on the season and solidly in first place in the Central Division. 15 points ahead of the Nashville Predators, a five-point lead clear over second place Winnipeg. That wraps up the Rebirth Sports full game recap that gets you all caught up on everything that happened between the Nashville Predators and the Dallas Stars full game analysis and the Renegades of Puck coming up next. Strong Style Fitness is a great partner here of the Renegades of Puck. We love our partners. Strong Style Fitness can be found online, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram is their preferred method of communication when it comes to social media. StrongStyleFit.com is where you can find the website. 150 workouts by a certified personal trainer, completely free to each and every one of the Renegades of Puck. Just go to YouTube and search Strong Style Fit, and you'll be able to find those. Whether it's your first step off the couch, your first workout, or you've been at it for years, Tracy has a workout that is designed and dedicated to each and every one of you out there. She just wants to get you moving and get you motivated and keep you healthy. She has provided all of these workouts on her YouTube channel completely for free. So Renegades of Puck in a world that has become increasingly more expensive every day, take advantage of an opportunity to have the Renegades of Puck personal trainer at Strong Style Fitness. Great partner here of the show. UC Soros went 30 out of 33 in this game, and he was a strong game in net, and he's not the problem again in this situation. Uh, for the Nashville Predators, UC Soros was certainly the problem in October and maybe the beginnings of November, and there were games that he was certainly responsible for losing, but this, this is not that time of year, and he is playing some pretty pretty outstanding goaltending for the Nashville Predators right now. Another fairly decent performance here. It's uh, not much he can do against the Dallas Stars, the Nashville Predators at moments in this game. 
game just failed to really uh, deliver playing solid defense, failed to come together as a cohesive unit in this game. And UC Soros got hung out just a little bit in this one. But I thought that he overall had a good performance. Philip Forsberg, great to see him back on the sheet with a goal. He, We need to see more from number nine, though. His offense needs to pick up. At this point in the season, 26 points in 33 games. He was averaging a point per game through the first 20-plus games of the season, and now it's absolutely just slowed down. And I know this is like a backhanded compliment. I bring him up to say good job for scoring, but then use most of the time to critique him for a lack of offense as of late. I just need to see more from Philip Forsberg. He is the most offensively gifted predator in history, and I need to see him putting the puck in the net more. He's coming off a 40-goal season. No, I don't expect him to get another 40-goal season, but I do expect him to continuously be up right there around 30 where he has been for a career, and he's going to have to really, really catch fire here coming up soon uh, if he's going to be able to do that Trennan good to see him back out there on the score sheet only his third of the season but he looked really strong in this game and I feel like he's looked stronger and stronger as of late and it's always good Yakov Trennan is a really really solid and important role player for this Nashville Predators team and he needs to be able to punch in some offense from time to time and he was uh, able to do that here in this game I felt that he had a pretty strong game overall 14-18 in total time on ice for Yakov Trennan and we don't get to talk about him uh, n- enough so when he puts the puck in the net we're definitely going to spend some time talking about him on the defensive side of thing Kerry and Ekholm uh, that was a strong performance by that defensive pairing right there uh, they're getting better and better all the time together Yossi and McDonough also getting better together. Uh, it's good to see the National Predators are solidifying a top four defense to head towards the midpoint of the season and beyond. Uh, they're probably going to have to do a little bit more adjusting on this third defensive pair. Luzon is taking too many penalties, especially late in games. And Dante Fabro is at 50-50 uh, most games. You just, Jekyll and Hyde, you don't know what you're going to get from him. One play, he just makes a spectacular stick check. And then the next play, he just makes a, a pass to nowhere, just turning the puck over it, goes for uh, an offensive opportunity for the other team. So they're going to have to do some more work on the third pair, but it's great to see how the top four defense pairing has seems to now be solidified. It's been a lot of uh, experimenting, and it's been dealing with some injuries, but now 33 games into the season, it truly does look like McDonough and Yossi, Ekholm and Carrier are going to be the top four grouping, and Ekholm and Carrier need to be singled out. They had a particularly strong game against a very, very good Dallas Stars team. Dallas is difficult to play against, and at Coleman Carey actually performed uh, quite well. And I made the note that the rusted, again, you know, we like to talk about rest versus rust. Well, multiple times this season, National Pairs have come off of breaks now, and they have not been rested, but they have been absolutely rusted. I don't even know if that phrase makes any damn sense or not, but I think you understand what I'm trying to say. The Preds, frankly, just do not look good when they're coming off of layoffs. They have not been able to capture the essence. It's like they're trying to catch up to the game. They're trying to catch a moving train when they come back from layoffs. Now, this Christmas break wasn't that long of a layoff. It was just a couple of days, but the first period clearly indicated the Nashville Predators did not have their skates under them. Once they got their skates under them in the second period, they were able to play a much more competitive game in the second period and for parts of the third period before the Dallas Stars pulled away there in the final minute. But for the Nashville Predators, the first 20 minutes were almost non-existent in this game. They came out of yet another break without having a whole lot of energy, a whole lot of jump, a whole lot of jam, and that's something that they're going to have to figure out. There are other breaks in the schedule uh, this season, and the Predators are going to have to find a way. You have to be able to use rest as a weapon against your opponent. You cannot have rest be a liability. Players throughout the course of a lengthy season, you've already been playing for a couple of months from training camp through preseason and now through a couple of months of in-game action, night in, night out. You have to be able to use rest to your benefit. And for the National Prayer so far, rest has been used uh, simply and only to their detriment. And that's something they're going to have to figure out. I, it's psychologically or, or figure out what they're going to have to do physically during these breaks. I don't know what the adjustment needs to be made because I don't know what they do during the breaks. But for the National Purpose, they've got to find a way to come out of the breaks and have stronger 
first games back from breaks. It can no longer be waiting two, three games for them to get their skates back under them before they start playing decent hockey again. They've got an opportunity coming up against Anaheim, and that's exactly what they need to do. They need to go and take care of that opportunity, but I'll get into that more here in a minute. Let's finish wrapping up everything that happened between the Nashville Purs and the Dallas Stars. You know, Sean C. Smith, he's got thoughts, he's got intel, he's got this report right here. You can find Sean C. Smith on Twitter at SCSNSH. You can find his work at A to Z Sports, and you can watch him right now on Renegades of Puck TV. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, Renegades, it's Sean Smith, and we're going to talk about this unfortunate loss to the Dallas Stars. And what I want to talk about tonight, and it's it's not normally my lane, but I think I'm going to get in it and see what it feels like. I want to talk about the goaltender situation. Now, of course, when I well, okay, if you noticed, everybody, uh, with chaos here in in the studio, we've had some construction projects going on. Uh, my my studio lights aren't set up. My my tripod's down. I've got a 13 year old doing her doing her darndest to keep this thing straight and even and it's not going so well but here's the thing i want to talk about goaltender situation tonight during the game the uh the broadcast put up this uh this this here i don't know i took a picture of it and we'll let it let it uh focus for a minute okay you see that yeah look all right most saves since november 12th and it was interesting because you had number one here uc Soros matched up against number two here with Jake Ottinger. So what's interesting is Soros has uh, seven more saves. And first you'd say, like, whoa, that's that's pretty cool. You see Soros is a saving machine. But here's the problem. Look down at the bottom. Soros had 471 saves in 15 games, where Ottinger had uh, 464 in 17 games. And and I think that's, that's what we need to talk about is Soros is playing great. He really is. And, and you can't – I don't think anybody would argue with you on that – the problem is that he is literally the only thing keeping this team competitive. The only thing. Because when you have that many saves made, it means there have been that many shots allowed. And if he's done that many more saves in that many less games, that means there's a whole heck of a lot of shots being taken on the Predators, and those shots are being allowed to be taken on the Predators by the team. So the defense is something that clearly needs to step up. Yeah, we've talked about offense a lot, Renegades. We have. The team needs to score more. There's no question. There's no doubt. That's exactly what the storyline's been all season long. Somebody needs to step up and start scoring goals. But somebody needs to step up and stop allowing so many shots on poor UC Soros. Because he's he's basically in front of the firing squad out there. And he's doing everything he can to keep this team competitive. And you know what? It's working right now. But this team is one injury to Soros away from being in the doldrums. And I'm not talking about the fun kind of cool doldrums where it's like, oh, hey guys, cool, let's hang out and just kind of be lame for a while. I'm talking if Soros goes down, you're in big trouble as a team. So much like this shaky camera is doing, the team's starting to flounder a little bit out there. And Soros is the only thing holding it together. Maybe, Charlie, you're the only thing holding the show together right now because the camera situation in this studio, it's going downhill fast. Charlie, that's all I got for tonight. I'm going to send it back over to you. Stripe Digital Solutions is another great partner of the Renegades of Puck, and I sure do appreciate everything Stripe Digital Solutions does for us here in the trenches. Check out their work, stripedigitalsolutions.com, or online, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You see the crest that is on the jersey right here. You see the logo on the wall behind me, the website, Renegades of Puck. Dot com our social media and brand building plan all of that is managed by and through stripe digital solutions we could not succeed on any level in the current world the way it functions without a strong digital partner and stripe digital solutions is the strongest digital partner i urge and encourage each and every one of you to reach out to brandy and start the conversation today i think that my website is fantastic my logos my graphics i think everything is wonderful and that is because i have visions and ideas and then they are whittled down by stripe digital solutions into something that actually is coherent and makes sense on the screen they do incredible work and i encourage each and every one of you check out stripe digital solutions today taking a look at the box score philip forsberg goal scorer yakov trennan also goal scorer in this game for the nashville predators on the assist side of things cole smith good to see cole smith picking up a point in this game but another missed opportunity at close range for cole smith to end up with a goal picks up assists in this game and then three defensemen pick up assists in this 
this game as well. Kerry and Ekholm talked about how they had a particularly good game as a pairing. Also picked up an assist each in this game. And Luzon also picks up an assist in this game. Shots on goal. Three was the magic number. You had six Nashville Predators in total with three shots on goal. Three forwards, three defensemen on the forward side of things. Forsberg, Jankowski, and Janot. Thought Jankowski made a really good play with the minutes that he had. 10-12. Thought that he really tried to earn some extra minutes coming up. Janot also with three shots on goal. On the defenseman side of things, three also with three shots on goal. Carey Ekholm and Fabro three shots apiece. Now, when it comes to block shots, three again was the magic number. Tanner Janot blocked three on the forward side of things. On the defenseman side of things, we had two defensemen with three block shots. Matthias Ekholm and the captain, Roman Yossi. In total hits, Tanner Janot led the team with six. Nobody else even close. Forsberg did have three. Trennan had three. And Carrier also had three hits for the Nashville Predators. Not as physical a game as the Nashville Predators and Dallas Stars typically have. Uh, there were some small scrums, but typically the emotions run a lot higher. These two teams, of course, they've been competing for the tops of the Central Division and playoff spots in the Central Division uh, for a number of years now. And they've competed against each other in high-profile events like the Winter Classic and also in a best-of-seven playoff series. So for the National President and Dallas Stars, this was a uh, particularly lacking in the physical play. I was kind of surprised that there wasn't more emotion when it comes to that. But emotion is unfortunately not in the box score. But what it is is time on ice. And Mikhail Granlin, no surprise for the forwards, leads the forwards in skating time on ice. 1938 in total time on ice. Novak, the only player on the National Purge under 10 minutes in time on ice, only 837 in this game. The captain, Roman Yossi, of course, leads the National Purge in total skated minutes, 2407 in this game. UC Saros in net 30 out of 33. That takes care of the box scores or the official numbers, but let's get more into it. Let's talk about the stats, the analytics, and let's talk to Brian Bass. He's got the numbers you need to know, the charts you need to see from on the forecheck.com. You can find him on Twitter at Brian Baston, and you can watch his report right now on Renegades of Puck TV. The Nashville Predators overcame an awful start in tonight's matchup with the Dallas Stars to enter the third period tied at two. Part of that had to do that bad start was due to the Stars' aggressiveness on the forecheck and how they created their chances. However, despite Dallas getting 29 scoring chances in the first two periods at all situations, Nashville was able to keep the game tied behind a shorthanded goal and a goal at four on four. So how did the Predators survive the first half of the game where it looked at times to be the beginning of yet another embarrassing loss? And what went wrong in the third period for the Predators when they allowed the game-winning goal from Rupe Hintz? That is the topic of tonight's One Big Stat. Nashville, in the first period, got doubled up by the Stars in shot attempts, ending the period with 14 uh, at all strengths compared to Dallas's 28. In fact, Dallas was able to tally just over two expected goals in the first frame, yet ended the period with just a single goal on the board. Besides the play of UC Saros, which was great as usual, Nashville managed to keep Dallas off the score sheet, allowing them to score a goal less than expected, and that's because the Preds were able to keep the Dallas Stars off target. Now, we've talked about on-target percentages before, but as a refresher, this is just the percentage of all shot attempts that actually got on net. At all situations, the Predators held Dallas to just 12 shots on goal in those 28 attempts in the first period, an on-target percentage of 43%. In the second, the Predators dominated play, scoring two goals and allowing one, again because Dallas had just four shots on goal out of 17 attempts, a percentage of just 24. Now, the Predators did a good job of keeping a lot of Dallas's 71 shot attempts away from UC Saros. The Stars finished at 33 shots in 71 attempts, just under 50%, but with such a strong second period, how did the Stars end up back at nearly 50% for the game? They did it by being extremely efficient with their shot selection. They played more aggressively in the third period, and their shot selection again was incredibly precise. They had 17 shots on goal in 26 attempts for an on-target rate of 65% and racked up nearly half of their expected goals for the game, getting 2.4 of 5.1 expected goals in, in the third, a stellar shot quality of over 11%. Now, Nashville has seen their offense struggle to keep up with opponents at times, but the defense, despite the weaker-than-average play this season, they're still doing some things right. They were able to control the chaos generated by Dallas in the first two periods, but unfortunately could never get going offensively, finishing the night with zero goals at 5-on-5. Five five. For Nashville to be able to walk away with a win in games like this, the offense has to be able to provide the goal support beside, behind the sound defensive structure and, again, a stellar performance by UC Saros, who, by the way, finished with two goals saved above expected despite giving up three. And that's tonight's One Big Stat.
I'm Crazy Charlie Sonia, captain of the Renegades of Puck. I'm also tired of the cold, tired of the dark, and tired of being landlocked. I'm also willing to bet that I'm not the only one who could use some sun, fun, and time in paradise with friends. That's exactly why I called our great friend Pete Weber. He told me, call ships and trips travel, and now we're all going to Mexico. That's right, Renegades of Puck, July 15th to the 20th of 2023. Dreams Vallarta Resort in Puerto Vallarta is the destination to hang with Pete Weber in paradise. To join Pete and the Renegades of Puck in Puerto Vallarta, go to www.shipsandtripstravel.com. That's shipsandtripstravel.com. And just click on the ROP on vacation tab. Don't stay landlocked. Join the Renegades of Puck in paradise, July 15th to the 20th, 2023 in Puerto Vallarta. Pete Weber, the Renegades of Puck and you. It's time to ditch those skates for flip-flops and fun in the sun. There's four points left in the year 2022. The Nashville Purs will face off against a last place team and a first place team that looks like they're going to split two and two, but that's not what the Nashville Purs need to do. The Nashville Purs need to take this 24 hours, the last 24 hours of the year 2022, and they need to go, they need to make a statement. They need to beat a last place team, that's obvious, but then they need to go into Vegas on New Year's Eve and they need to seize those two points from a first place team. The Nashville Purs need another signature win before the end of this calendar year and beating the last place Anaheim Ducks will never qualify as a signature win. Go seize those four points. Close the calendar year of 2022 out as strong as you possibly can and then have one hell of a celebration in Vegas on New Year's Eve and then come on back home and be ready for the year 2023 and what you must do in the second half of the season to continue to improve this team. This Nashville Predators team is a work in progress and that is as nice as I can say it at this point. The top four defensemen seem to be solidifying some of the winger and center combat combinations seem to be generating a little bit of good things moving forward. So this is good for the Nashville Purse. Some good chemistry with some good players and UC Soros continues to be really strong in net for the Nashville Purse. Go seize this opportunity. Go close the year by taking all of those points on this quick two-game road trip. Then you can relax for one night on New Year's Eve before it's time to start a brand new year and a brand new quest after all. There's only a half a season to go before it's time for the playoffs. Speaking of the end of the calendar year 2022, make sure you're keeping on your eyes out. We'll have a recap show, some of our highlights, some of our best moments of the past year here from the Renegades of Puck from the Bunker, Renegades of Puck TV and the Renegades of Puck podcast. We look forward to putting that together. We will have that out here in the next couple of days. So we sure do appreciate everybody for checking us out. Please support us on social media. We cannot express our gratitude enough as we head towards the end of the year to all of our great people over at Full Press Coverage, the Full Press NHL site, and the Full Press Predators podcast, as we are also known as more people than ever are listening to the show and watching the show and participating in the show thanks to our management and thanks to our affiliations that we have signed over the last couple of months. We are incredibly happy and excited what we have accomplished here as we are rounding out 2022, and we are so, so happy and excited to show you what we have coming in the year 2023. Sure to appreciate each and every one of you. We will be back for the final two games of this calendar year, but we'll roll out our recap before that so you guys can enjoy some of the highlights of the year as we head into the new year. Stick taps, love, and respect. Sure to appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time and supporting the Renegades of Puck. I am your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sunday.